Hi, this is Ruben. This is a quick guide on how to apply model-driven architecture and TOGAF principles on projects using Enterprise Architect. Companies found it necessary to have a generic model of their business because systems tend to get outdated and uh, at the same time they wanted to have a generic infrastructure that uh, remains same and that can be adapted to the new environment. So this generic framework is what MDA works at building. So TOGAF provides the definition and uh, MDA provides the implementation. So TOGAF helps us to define target architectures and uh, MDA is a guide to how to implement it. Now in TOGAF we have architecture building blocks. Uh, which are referred to as platform independent model in model driven architecture and uh, they have computation independent model which refers to domain model in uh, MDA and they have solution building blocks which are platform specific models in uh, MDA. So there are uh, clear mappings between TOGAF and MDA and uh, it can be applied uh, to any project to uh, improve the standards, uh, efficiency and speed of execution. So that is what we are going to focus on the tool Enterprise Architect and how we can achieve that using both these architectural guidelines. Now Enterprise Architect uh, provides uh, for uh, business process domain modeling with, uh, tools for business architecture model uh, for application architecture model you have component and class models that you can create. You have data architecture model uh, which is mapped to data models and so this takes care of uh, information architecture and uh, technology architecture model is your different targeted uh, architecture models so deployment models can help you to define those and uh, your transition architectures. So if you see Enterprise Architect can cover most of the TOGAF principles. Now even with your preliminary investigation it helps you to create documents uh, using MDG technology master document templates. You have requirements activity model and you can define the architectural vision, the scope and everything here. You could uh, go into your uh, uh, business architecture where you can define the domain, the process activity models. Uh, you could go to uh, your uh, uh, information architecture model which is your uh, data model and application model which is your class or domain model depending on uh, which phase you are in and uh, you have deployment models which helps you to define your technology architecture and uh, that is the target architectures involved. Uh, you can use a solution building blocks as uh, your uh, reusable patterns library so that you can validate your opportunities and solutions here and uh, choose the best model. Uh, you have transformation templates to help you generate any sort of uh, documents that you require and project management traceability. You have transformation templates that help you to create your uh, migration plans and uh, implement them. Uh, you have architectural governance which and uh, management which can be taken care of project management tools and uh, your traceability matrix and testing frameworks helps you to make sure that uh, you have proper governance model implemented. This is the application part and the theory can be separate. So here is an integrated tool that helps you to apply TOGAF principles to real world projects. So. Let's just uh, look at the generative capabilities of EA here and uh, from a MDA perspective you are having a domain model which you can uh, which is your platform independent model which you transform into a platform specific model uh, which can be the class or data model and uh, you have a, a, uh, your platform specific model to a code transformation using code transformation template which may be your source code or SQL script and uh, on model driven generation you have uh, 
different technologies that helps you to generate uh, content based on your uh, requirements model use case model process component activity state chart or sequence or uh, deployment models and you have your testing model and user interface model now on the upper hand we have fast starting of projects which is coined by uh, omg and you have you can build a reusable patterns component library over time you can also create a technology framework and practice models so it is possible to reuse some of these uh, frameworks omg's initiative was to fast start projects by using mda and uh, it helps to uh, define the framework required for the project and you can also build a reusable patterns component library over time after each project is completed we regenerate uh, or reverse engineer those code back into the component level and uh, save them as a pattern library so that we can reuse it across projects and uh, it is possible to build a virtuous or technology framework and different practice models for each practice mdg allows process automation document generation real time collaboration and traceability management so in the earlier session i had spoken about mdg this is specific to mda so let me get down to the uh, crux of it domain model is a high level platform independent view uh, it is uh, composed of all the nouns in the system all the objects that interact with each other this comprises of oh, the architecture application architecture model uh, as defined in togaf and it's a platform independent view of the system uh, to construct a domain model it is quite uh, simple it is similar to a conceptual er diagram uh, we don't define primary or foreign keys here but the main focus is to describe this system clearly um it it is just generically uh, stating the different objects and uh, defining all the attributes clearly in a readable format and you provide associations and uh, basic relationships between the models and after that we can just transform it to any other model that you want like your data model or your class model so it helps you to select a database and it selects helps you to select a particular transformation um, framework let us go into uh, enterprise architect and explore these options to begin with i have uh, created a basic domain model so we are looking at an airlines uh, uh, project and uh, we have a flight scheduling system with customers booking uh, their seats on different flights you have route manifest you have seating capacity you got airports your base stations from here we will see how we can generate both data models and class models to begin with we select what database we need so we go to database data types and we select uh, mysql now it supports a lot of databases but for this demo we are going to use mysql okay so we close here and uh, this is an out of the box feature available with enterprise architect and uh, you could begin here and try out some other advanced models so i would go to right click the models and click transform and i select ddl and i created already a data model wizard uh, a package for generation of that uh, data model so all i have to do now is click do transform so let us see the generated uh, data model let me spread this out a bit
it has created also the classes that are required so as you can see it generates all the fields and uh, uses a format that we require this is a fully generated data model from which we can generate the SQL scripts so now uh, it is possible to generate a SQL script right away so we are going to right click the DDL and uh, generate a script so let's generate So we select all child packages and click generate. Now it is possible to view the generated source. We'll just say use airlines, save. As a next step to this, we are going to execute the script. okay so now we have a database that is prepared we'll work on the class model so we go back to our original domain model here we need to select what technology or uh, framework that we wish to transform it to so I click transform after right clicking the model and I select GSF so I have to create class models here so I select the class model and I click do transform so if you notice it's creating all the VO classes manager classes DO classes uh, managed beans once this process is done you could go and check even this source to see how it has generated the code so let us generate the source code out so to generate the source code first you generate the model then you generate the source code so we just need to click generate source code auto generate files okay desktop and I click generate so it's writing the actual Java files and once you generate the source code you can actually see the uh, coding within so as you can see it has uh, already been spring wired uh, and uh, it is auto wired uh, a DAO instance and uh, it has your basic uh, create update delete uh, find by station ID or list all station IDs all the generic functions have been written your CRUD operations and you can see all the VO objects similarly and it has all setters getter methods which have been populated and uh, we have a uh, managed beans which is used by your GSF class so basically uh, it helps us to generate all the classes that we need for the project and it helps you to get ahead very quickly so even if the architect is not uh, a person who's well versed in that particular technology he might be a java architect he could still generate source code in dotnet and help the team to fast start their projects what are the other custom transforms that we can do customized transformations can provide the architecture building blocks 
for rapid application generation so now as you can see what we have created right now was specifically for a gsf in the same way it is possible to write many more transformation templates so we could create uh, some for gsf with uh, ejbs instead of spring layer you could use uh, uh, java web services spring gsf or spring mvc uh, struts framework with spring core or any project models that we require your architecture building blocks you can define it here build it and generate give the generated source code to the developers this enhances the development timelines and uh, profitability because generated code is of the highest quality and uh, it also improves profitability because there is less time required and uh, less bugs in the project the next step is talking about incremental transforms so transformations are not a one shot uh, process you could have them uh, separated into many layers you could build the basic application model and then add a web services layer you could also have uh, separate testing classes that you build on top of the generated classes so it is not only from the domain model you can also go into the class model and apply transformations so let me demonstrate this by adding a JUnit testing framework we would go back to the generated class model so let's go to the manager classes we can select the manager classes and uh, you could transform it again and provide JUnit testing So as you can see it has generated all the testing classes for uh, JUnit and uh, we could generate the source code once again. So What we need to do here after creating a domain model is to add the services model. So it provides the basic manager classes but you can add beyond that you could generate your own services classes also to complete the exercise. Now let us go and count the number of lines that we have generated just to get a fair idea of how beneficial this exercise has been. So what I am going to do is I am going to add the folder that we just generated and check the number of lines of code that it has been able to generate. So as you can see from this exercise we are able to join uh, generate around 3000 lines of code and uh, it has 100% uh, comment ratio and uh, this is uh, we have 1200 code lines and we have your code to comment ratio which is near to 100 percent so since it's generated code it can also be very specific on uh, the java docs because it can generate uh, uh, the comment on what is being done clearly so if you have any questions or suggestions, please send it to me. I'll be more than happy to answer your questions. So I believe this is the way forward to build a good uh, architecture continuum. And uh, hopefully this has helped you.